I've been waiting for a situation to arise for a very long time where I can take one of my sculptures and absolutely maximize it. No, 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 bigger than that. Maximize it. Every year in Toronto, there's a citywide art festival that shuts down the streets of the city, and that is called Nuit Blanche. <laughs> Nuit Blanche is actually the reason why I wanted to become an artist in the first place. I wasn't only blown away by the art and the effort that went into creating these incredible installations, but also by how the people around the city came together from all different walks of life to come and appreciate this art. It was on that night 10 years ago that set forth the course of my life, but I decided that maybe it'd be cool to be an artist. I never thought about that before. Fast forward 10 years, and I've just been asked to display my art here at Stacked Market. But here's the catch. This was a little bit of a last minute thing, so I only have two weeks to make this happen. For that reason, instead of starting from nothing, why don't I just take something that I already made and then make it huge? <laughs> Easy, right? Wrong. I had originally designed this sculpture because I was going to the open sauce event in San Francisco back in July and I wanted to make a simple thing that I could print quickly that I could give away to people at the event. Inspired by the hands up emoji, one of my early designs was this overly complicated crank driven hands up machine. I called it raise the roof. I think you get why. But I wanted to revisit the hands up concept with a more compact smaller, easier to print design that had a slightly different activation, which is these paddles. The way it works is when you hit these paddles, it drives the center barrel through these bevel gears. In the center barrel, there's a slot and there's a knob on this slider piece that slides in the slot. And as the barrel turns, it lifts the slider up. The hands are connected by a four bar linkage to the center and they rest on these posts on the slider. And as the slider lifts up, it raises the hands up. And then as it drops, it drops the hands down. One of the things I really wanted to incorporate into this design is a way to keep the hands up in the top position. And so you can see the slot in the barrel cam has this flat spot at the top and at the bottom, and that way the hands can rest in an up or a down position. The sculpture works, and I love this one so much. If you wanna print this yourself, you can purchase the files from my website. The whole thing is 3D printed. But because of that, it turns out making this thing huge is not as simple as just hitting maximize in the slicer. So let's get into the details of what it took to make this thing huge. But before we do, I need to thank the sponsor that allowed me to just full commit to making these massive prints, and that is BetterHelp. BetterHelp is a platform for therapy. A few years ago, I started seeing a therapist once a week, not because I had some crazy clinical mental health issue that I was trying to address, but rather because I wanted to find better strategies and coping mechanisms to deal with the everyday challenges that I faced. My old coping mechanisms, which I learned were coping mechanisms I developed when I was a young child, were just not working anymore. Going to therapy changed my mind, it changed my life, and it changed the way that I see the world. Not only has it made me happier, it made my life better, but it's made me more resilient to face the challenges that I come across as an artist, engineer, and content creator. BetterHelp is a platform that makes therapy more affordable and more accessible to more people. You sign up for BetterHelp, you answer a few questions that tell them about you, your needs and your goals, and then they match you with a professionally licensed therapist that you can start communicating with in as little as a few days. If your therapist isn't a good fit, you can change to a different therapist for no additional costs without stressing about insurance or worrying about if the therapist is in your network. I'm a major supporter of therapy, and if you wanna try BetterHelp, there's a link in my description below. It's betterhelp.com JBV, and it will get you a 10% discount off the first month of therapy so you can try it out and see if it works for you. All right, let's get back to making this sculpture huge. So first things first, I got myself a massive printer, and then I scaled up the size of the original base in the slicer to determine the maximum size it could be to fit on this printer bed. This is the original sculpture on the bed. This is the sculpture scaled up to a size that could fit on the bed of my previous biggest 3D printer. And then this is just a single hand, which is seven and a half times bigger than the original sculpture. Of course, the height of the base post was too big to fit on this printer bed. So next I had to splice the model and figure out how to connect all the pieces together so it could fit on the bed. I ended up going with these big 3D printable screws. Next was handling friction. 
The original model is fully 3D printed and the parts are so light that friction doesn't really factor in. So I didn't need to use any bearings or anything. Everything is just 3D printed and assembled together. For the bigger model, everything needs to move very smoothly. And so bearings become a huge factor. Fortunately, I had some big bearings kicking around the shop. And so I just designed around those. Funny enough, I really didn't need to use these massive bearings on this project. The weight of the parts doesn't even come close to the maximum weight that these bearings can handle. For some reason, it felt kind of wrong to not use these massive bearings and these massive 3D printed screws. So I just went with it. I added a bearing to the cam follower so it could slide up and down the barrel a lot more smoothly. I also added bearings to the arm linkage assembly, which was previously a full print in place part on the original scale model. Now I have a working design. It is time to just full send and hit print. And it is so scary because the base alone is two and a half kilograms of material. So if I missed anything or I messed anything up, it becomes very expensive. But at some point you gotta just full send. So let's do it. If you're wondering how long this whole thing took to print, so am I. So let's do a quick tally and see what it is. Starting with the hands that come in at 1,474 grams and 29.3 hours of printing. Next is the barrel cam, which I printed on my fastest printer. That is 738 grams and 17.1 hours of printing. Next up are the paddles, which I printed together and they came to 1,030 grams at 20 hours of printing. The slider took 605 grams of material and 12.3 hours to print. The three posts combined took 620 grams of material and 13 and a half hours to print. The arms took 570 grams of material and 12 hours to print and the miscellaneous other parts that were required to put this whole thing together came in at 936 grams and 23.6 hours of printing and then of course there was the base which the first layer took over an hour to print on its own and that came in at a total of 2428 grams of material and 46.6 hours of printing adding all of these values together it comes in at a grand total of 8,400 grams of material, 8.4 kilograms, and 174.4 hours of 3D printing. Okay, I'm gonna pull it off the build plate. Ready? <sighs> Holy, it is massive. The biggest thing I've ever printed is officially done. It looks pretty damn good if you're asking me, but there's a little problem. For some reason, these two posts are a little bit too far apart from each other. Not exactly sure why, but if I push them in a little bit, they get to the exact distance that they need to be. My solution, I'm gonna laser cut a template for the exact distance that these need to be. I'm gonna throw this into the oven, the oven in my kitchen oven, and hopefully that's gonna pull them in without deforming any other part of this piece. If this doesn't work, I guess we'll have to reprint this, which is... I'm about 90% confident that this is gonna work. Could be optimism. I could try reprinting this piece. <laughs> There's a part of me that really wants to try this oven technique because like if it works, it's gonna feel so good. And if it doesn't work, it's gonna feel really, really bad. And there's like a little bit of like a risk reward here that's getting me fired up. So let's do it. The day is saved. I was fully prepared to print a whole new base. The moment of truth is really, is this gonna slide on the posts? Yes, it does. Wait, wait. Yes, it does. We're good. Time to add the final parts. Let's start with this top cap. The hands. I'm like, I'm scared to test it out. These are kind of heavy. <laughs> it's so big. Oh, don't even make that joke. I think I, I need to come up with some solution for this problem. <laughs> Oh, that actually scared the crap out of me. I wanna say it's like 80% of the way there. 
Just needs a little bit of finagling. All right, let's do some finagling. And finagle I did, starting by taking the entire thing apart and coating the inside of the slider sleeves with some polypropylene tape. And it actually made a surprisingly big difference. This is before putting on the tape. And this is after. Next, I grabbed some bungee cord, which came wrapped in a bungee cord. Love it. Drilled some holes into the arm pieces and strung the bungee cord between these adapters, which I then screwed into the holes. This was to counterbalance the weight of the arms so they wouldn't drop as fast. Once everything was strung up, I put the arms back onto the sculpture and you can see that there's a little too much bungee, but not a problem. Snip, snip, and it's perfect. The springs and elastics on the back of the arms are helping with the up part, but this is still dropping. So I got these hinges, which when they open, they open easily, but when they close, they dampen the motion. And my plan is to attach them to the back here so it will dampen the falling of the paddles. All right, so we got up and yes. I can't believe that worked. Up, down, up. All right, well that means that this is officially ready to go. Let's get this thing over to Stack Market and ready for new Blanche. sculpture is set up. It looks amazing. I'm so happy with the way it turned out. And this spot is epic. You can even see the CN Tower from up here. And if you're from Toronto, you know why that's important. So all that's left to do is go home, rest up, and come back tonight to see how people react to this thing. Let's do it. Really quick before we head to the final event, I wanted to show you something that I got a little bit carried away with, and that is this smaller version of the hands up sculpture. I really wanted to make something that anyone who wanted to take a piece of this project home with them can. So I packed this thing with bearings and that combined with this clean white print gives this thing a really premium feel that I'm super proud of. I've decided that I'm only gonna make 20 of these because I wanted to keep this as a collector's item special edition sculpture. I put a link in the description below. So if you're interested, you can check that out. And on that note, let's head over to the final event. Thank you so much for watching this video. It was really fun to get out of the studio and actually see how people interact with my art in real life. So huge thank you to Crybaby Gallery and Stack Market for hosting my work. I have another huge 3D printing project coming up in my next video. So I hope to see you there.